Hi, everyone. I'm Stephen Malora, owner of Prosperity Counseling and Coaching, licensed mental health counselor and part of Pineapple Support. Thank you very much to Pineapple Support and everyone for putting this on. I am always, as always, very pumped to be here. So finding your fangs. This is all about assertiveness, being able to establish boundaries, expectations with your people around you. Um, or maybe not the people around you, the people who are online or who are just a bunch of haters. But we're going to work on a little bit of psychoeducation, some meditations, and we're going to practice some communication to really express needs, values, and goals. So I swear the PowerPoint and the educational stuff will be short. We're just going to get through that real quick, and then we'll go on from there. All right, I'm not even going to present on this because it's going to be a real quick thing. Once again, Steve Melora. That's my website if you guys need it. We're just going to talk really quickly about agreeableness. So agreeableness is one of the big five personality traits. You don't really need to know what that is yet. But basically, if you're high in agreeableness, you're usually warm, friendly, tactful. You're optimistic about humans, other people. You get along well with others. If you're low on agreeableness, you may put your own interests above those of the others. You may tend to be distant, unfriendly, uncooperative. Maybe a little conflictual. And that's okay. It's there's it's neither right, wrong to be high or low in agreeableness. We're just exploring that as a personality trait. Now there's some subdomains here. Politeness, which is etiquette and good manners, and compassion, which is feeling for another person, your sensitivity to other people's emotional content. So, and that's basically it. We're really just exploring how close and how empathetic you are with other people what's the rules of behavior with other people so for example if you're let's just say you come from a big family and there's a holiday that just passed maybe you got into a little bit of an argument but maybe part of the politeness maybe the the expectation is we don't fight during holidays or we don't fight while the entire family is around you take that outside you take it to the basement it's like okay that's a rule and if we break that rule, maybe there's some fear of something negative happening there. Or we can go the other way and say, even if someone is being mean to me, being a bully, being an asshole, I might feel bad if I hurt them. So let's get off of screen sharing and let's just make this a conversation. I work with plenty of clients who need to find their fangs a little bit who are very, very empathetic and very sensitive and really wish they lived in a world where violence and hate and all these other things didn't exist. That world hasn't existed. Maybe it will one day, but right now we're working with the, with the world we have, with the best we can. The concept is, I work with plenty of people who might be people pleasers or codependent, and they'll say, if someone punches me in the face, I will apologize to them. Because clearly, if they punch me in the face, there must be a good reason. I must have done something to them. And it's like, no, maybe we just need to understand malice. Maybe we just need to understand that some people are just dickheads. And there's nothing actually wrong that you did. Now, that's an extreme case, of course. But we're exploring personality. And it means something about them and their interactions with the world and other people. So let's break this down. If you're high in agreeableness, if you're high in empathy and sensitivity to other people's negative emotion, it's really hard for you to set boundaries. Say, don't cross this line or these negative consequences will happen. Simple enough, right? Well, why, Steve? Well, we can go, that could be a whole course, but let's just do the quick and simple dirty ones. Guilt and shame. Guilt says, I did something wrong. Shame says, I am something wrong. And sometimes, a lot of the time, they go together. If you have this idea, a good son does X, Y, and Z, and you break those rules, not only do you get to say, I feel guilty for breaking the rules, I also get to say, well, I'm clearly a bad son as part of my identity, as evidenced by this action. So about both the guilt and shame are showing up. So... Uh, let's give it a specific example. Um, I don't know. Uh, to be a good son, never ma make your mother cry. Well, 
events happen. And it's like, wait, wait, wait. I get into a fight with my mom. I yell at her. Maybe to establish some boundaries here. And then she starts crying and I was just like, oh, God, I'm a terrible person. Now, it sounds simple enough, right? Whatever, you can fill that in with whatever rules you have or whatever identity you have. So you can say, well, good daughter, good husband, good wife, good business person, good whatever. Whatever you want to be good or whatever your identity is, these are the rules we're establishing for ourselves or what the family establishes or what society establishes. If you break them, maybe it comes with some internalized guilt and self-judgment. So let's just be aware of that at first. Okay. So you're high in agreeableness. You probably feel more guilt and self-judgment and shame if you establish clear and appropriate boundaries and expectations with your friends, neighbors, coworkers, family, loved ones, and romantic partners. Even when they might be appropriate needs and boundaries. So some of my clients will say, I don't know what appropriate is. So one of the things we can do is say, wait, wait, wait. How would this apply to everyone else on planet Earth? A lot of times we as human beings are our own worst enemies, our own worst judges. And we say, well, I really want to establish this boundary with mom, dad, sister, whoever. But I'm afraid that I'm asking too much. We can then say, well, wait a minute. If I was just watching this as a sitcom, if this was happening to one of my friends, would I say to my friend, hey, this thing is unreasonable that you're asking for? If your desire is, I want a better relationship with my sister, and I, in order to do that, I need her to shut up about certain subjects, including weight, dating, and finances. And I say, sis, we want to have a better relationship. If we want to interact, I really want you to stay off the subjects of my weights, my dating life, and my finances anytime we talk about. Everyone, anytime we meet up for coffee or have a phone call or whatever. It's like, well, if that helps you have a better relationship, do it. That's a logistical answer. Emotionally, sounds reasonable to me. If you were to ask, if one of your friends were to say, hey, in order to have a better relationship with this person, I need to set these boundaries, would you say, oh, that makes sense? This makes complete sense and it's appropriate to the situation? Or you can say, no, it doesn't feel like that. But I'm just, either way, we're just saying, wait a minute, when we are looking at our own needs and expectations with others, let's really set the idea, what is appropriate here? And Let's make sure that we're getting an objective view and not just a self-judgmental one. Now, I know I'm throwing a lot of content really quickly at you in regards to the psycho ed. So let's take a step back. Now let's go to the feelings. And we're just going to do a quick, quick five-minute meditation. So first start by closing your eyes, getting comfortable in your chair, or wherever you are, and just breathing in and breathing out at your own pace. And this is just going to be a feeling meditation. We're not going to have any worries about how to get this feeling or the steps to make this happen. We're just going to see we're just going to visualize and see what feelings what emotions come up. What might it feel like to have the best relationship with someone who you might have a conflictual relationship right now with? What, think of an enemy or someone who has hurt you in the past and just visualize what would you feel if that relationship was healthy, ideal, safe, and just breathe in and breathe out at your own pace and let those emotions in.
And if you find yourself feeling many emotions, maybe, you can just say, I'm feeling all these things. And that's okay. And if you find yourself resisting or getting angry while you think about this healthy, this ideal relationship, that's okay too. All that is is saying, maybe I'm afraid of letting my guard down around this person or I feel too hurt by this person to even think about what a healthy relationship looks like. And that's okay. Think about someone else then. Even if that someone else is a friend, someone you love, maybe even someone you have maybe no problems with. And just focus on the feeling, what would I feel if... I had the ideal relationship with this person and just breathe in and breathe out. And when you feel that you've done this enough, just bring your attention back to the room or back to the screen, wherever you are. Hmm. I like this as a feeling meditation because a lot of times people will come to me and say, I don't know how to get the relationships I want. If that's okay, we'll figure out the logistics later. Right now, I just want to know, what are you feeling? What do you want to feel? And it's very helpful to understand what it is we're trying to, what's our objective here? So you might have come up with safety, surety, genuine happiness, excitement, connection, belonging, satisfaction, fulfillment, gratification, feeling rewarded, feeling at peace, any of those things, maybe all of them, maybe, maybe none of them and something else. And all that is okay. You're allowed to feel whatever you feel. <clears throat> now, let's talk about anger. And we'll come back to these emotions in a minute. But let's talk about anger real quick. Anger is always a secondary emotion meaning it always comes up to cover up something else so anger comes up if you're feeling lonely hurt heartbreak grief disgust contempt um frustration frustration being i want something i can't have it or i have something i can't get rid of it and this the entire anger is it always comes up with something else it's never just coming up alone ever so with that in mind when we when we were with family at the holiday party or with the with the romantic partner and something negative happens or whatever when something negative happens where we're getting angry what we're really saying is we're getting hurt I want us to keep that in mind as we move into how to communicate. So my job here is not to make you as heartless as I am or to be make you like I'm ready to fight people and not feel any guilt, any shame ever again. No, if, if that flip, if that switch existed and you find a way to flip it, great. Tell me how to do that because I can make a, money, a lot of money off of that. But I don't know how that works. Let's just say, hey, we care about what boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, dad, mom, family members, friends think about you. I care about what they feel. I care about what they think. I'm allowed to be sensitive 
to other people's emotions, especially when they're in pain and I see that. And yes, even when that means your enemy, someone who is malice against you, you can still say, even though I don't like it, I'm still allowed to feel empathy for this person, even though he's a fucking hater or whatever it is. <clears throat> so, a lot of times when I'm working with people about finding their fangs, being assertive, they will say something like, Steve, I love this idea. I don't know how to do it. So let's go into one of the easiest ways to express what we need and in a way that's civil, in a way that's usually almost never crossing boundaries. Now, once again, a little bit of psycho ed, and we'll see if this actually works because technology. Okay, there we go. Maybe this will work. Please bear with me. I do know how to use Zoom. Maybe. There we go. Awesome. So this is the basic components of nonviolent communication. Nonviolent communication was made by a psychologist, I believe, in like 50 years ago. It doesn't matter. Main ideas. Well, all we're doing is saying, this is what happened. This is what I feel. This is what I need. And this is how you can do it. That's it. We're not saying anything in regards to judgment, labels. We're not saying, listen here, you motherfucker, you. I'm going to kick your ass and this is why no one loves you. We're not doing the insults. We're not doing anything too malicious or too aggressive. Now, I'm not against aggression, especially when appropriate. Sometimes we need to tear people's throats out when appropriate. But right now, we're just doing assertiveness. We're saying, hey, these are the boundaries. These are the expectations. So we're just going to go through it real quick. And it's simple enough. Observation, feeling, need, request. Observation. When I see, when I hear, when I notice whatever it is, then when I feel, I feel X, Y, and Z. What I need is A, B, and C, and this is how you do it. So for example, um, let me think of a good example here. When I work with couples, this is something I do a lot. Uh, well, when I want free time and I see you, romantic partner, needing more time with me, needing more affection. I feel tense, embarrassed, vulnerable, uneasy. What I need is distance, autonomy, some, some level of self-isolation for some period of time. Well, romantic partner, would you be willing to Give me an hour alone when I need it. Simple enough. Hey, when this happens, I feel this and I need this. Would you be willing to? I love this. It has no judgments, no labels. We're just requesting needs and we're trying to make it so that the other person isn't getting defensive and you the person speaking are also not getting defensive we're not making this a domination game or a i have to win against my romantic partner or this person i'm trying to have a healthy relationship with it's not that so let's give another couple examples think about it for one second Well, mom, when I say something that's important to me and you um, insult it or say something about how it isn't important, I feel invalidated. I feel um, maybe angry because it that anger comes with some feeling of 
mm, Shane with it. What I would need from you is if I share something, either remain neutral, say, oh, that's nice, and move on, or um, some level of care, some level of just uh, something that's, that just shows that you heard me. Would you be willing to share your thoughts with me if I share something important with you? Sounds simple enough, right? That was the one was a little complicated. I might refine that just a little bit. Maybe I would say, well, I feel invalidated sometimes. And excuse me, when I hear that you're not interested in things I share, I feel invalidated, detached from you, some shame with it. What I would like is more connection with you. Would you be willing to negotiate with me in regards to what we can connect on? Cool. All right. So definitely look up nonviolent communication. Practice this. Practice this in the mirror. Practice this with friends if you want to. I I do this, but all my friends are counselors, so they're into that stuff. Um, let's move on a little bit more. We'll definitely return to this, but if I can figure out where the stop sharing is. There we go. Okay. So we got a pretty good map. We got an understanding of our own agreeableness. We can understand our own empathy and our sensitivity to other people, people feeling pain. We also have a, a couple different ways. We know what we want to feel in our relationships. And we have one way to express our needs. Now, let's take it a little further. Well, Steve, I love this. And I'm definitely going to practice those NVC, nonviolent communication techniques. However, I work in an industry or I'm with people in my family who don't actually seem to be able to meet me where I'm at. I want to establish boundaries and expectations and have a good relationship with these people. But anytime I try, they blow up at me, even when it's reasonable, even when I'm just asking for the littlest thing imaginable. That's when we say, don't wrestle with the pig. Phrase is, don't wrestle with the pig because you'll just be rolling around in the mud and the pig shit. And, but the pig enjoys it and you're probably not going to want to. Don't fight with people who like fighting. Don't fight with people. Well, unless you like fighting too, of course. Don't fight with people who like fighting and you hate fighting. <laughs> don't fight with people who are unreasonable and can't act like adults. We can say, okay, I'm not going to have the ideal relationship with this person. I'm not going to be able to have a drink with this person at the bar after hours. I'm not going to be able to be able, I am not going to be able to have this person join my book club or go skiing with me or whatever. The idea is I can probably get a neutral or just civil enough relationship with this person. We're going to work together or we're going to interact together. We'll see each other for holidays and, I don't know, at the coffee shop every so often. But we're not having deep conversations. And that's okay. We don't have to fight everyone. We don't have to be BFFs with everyone. The problem there might be something like this. Well, Steve, this is great. Distance is fine, too. But when it's mom, dad, romantic partner, it's kind of a big deal. And, and that's where we start to see where there were where we can prioritize. It's like, okay, if we are in an in-depth relationship with someone, but we're not actually getting that connection or that healthy relationship, things need to change. Maybe that means how you guys communicate, what the expectations are. Maybe you need to see a couples counselor through through um pineapple support or your insurance or whatever it is you want. But the idea is things need to change and we can say, oh, I seem to be stuck with this person. 
I don't have the relationship I want with this person. Maybe this is where an argument in a... Maybe this is where a higher level of aggression is necessary. If two people are together and they can act like adults and be professional and have this conversation, the nonviolent communication, hey, I feel X because Y, what I need from you is, could you, would you be willing to do this? Great. I love that. But if they're unwilling to, that's when you keep the distance. But if you can't stop, keep the distance, that's when we say, wait a minute, there's something that needs to be resolved here. And maybe this requires a fight, an argument, or something to a higher level. Now let's go back to that guilt idea. Well, Steve, I have a hard time fighting with other people because even if I win, I still feel incredibly, incredibly guilty. As in, the worst thing in the world is to hurt someone else, or the worst thing in the world is to hurt my romantic partner. It's like, good, don't, if you don't have to. But we sometimes have to feel the guilt and do it anyway. So let's get a relatively important argument. Let's assume the two biggest things, people fight and divorce over money and kids. Let's talk money first. Let's say one person, let's say two people are married, person A is very thrifty, very much in the long-term thinking, hey, I'm preparing for retirement, whether that's at 65 or we want to get the independence early, we're doing it at 30. It's like, hey, I'm trying to save as much money as possible, buy assets, not liabilities, work my ass off. Good. Person B, spouse. Other direction. Nah, I have it, I'm going to spend it. I want to enjoy life now. Uh, you know, retirements for future me. We'll figure that out later. And it's like, okay, we got these two people fighting. This is one of those things where we try to remain civil, but if we need to raise it to a higher level of aggression, we can say, I'm not going to make this a domination game. I'm not going to make this where both of us lose or one of us loses now, but it help, it makes us lose both makes both of us lose in the long run because we don't want to defeat our spouses because then we have a defeated spouse and then that come that shit comes back to get you later it really does that resentment will build or it'll come out in a different way <laughs> anyway we can reach a level of aggression here but there are lines we can't cross there are things where we can say, even if we're yelling at, e at each other or even if we're trying to win this as an argument in our in our negotiation i'm not going to destroy this relationship so find out where your limits are i like to bring this up I'm, I'm not bringing up any more stuff but let's uh if you've ever heard of fair fighting rules it's a list of rules that most couples counselors adhere to where we say listen even if you're arguing, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do insults. We're not do, going to do screaming. We're not going to do sarcasm. Sarcasm absolutely destroys relationships. All of them. We're not going to do X, Y, and Z. And we're saying, even when we're trying to fight, I am not going to move past this thing. So, m find a fair fighting... Uh, excuse me. Find a fair fighting rules list or create your own and say, okay, I know that maybe I'm afraid of being assertive or aggressive with certain people, but as long as I keep in mind that I'm not going beyond these limits, maybe this is where I can push myself a little bit and say, this is me being assertive. This is me really fighting for myself, advocating for myself. And maybe I'll still feel a little guilty, but as long as I keep it below this threshold, I'll be fine. Now, this is great for a spouse and family members. Etiquette is great. But Steve, what about work? What about personal life? What about friends? Where it's harder to 
um, maybe even establish the etiquette and the rules beforehand. Maybe we're coming with coming up against people who are from not only a different culture, but a very, very different way of thinking about how um, arguments should happen. Logistically, we should just, you know, negotiate how we talk together. But that's easier said than done. Well, this is where we start to really get into finding our fangs and keeping our ability to empathize, to care about, to love people, both in general and specifically. I can cause an argument. Let me rephrase. I want to say that differently. I can be in an argument. I can advocate for my own needs. And if my if the other person or persons starts crying or is hurt, I might feel bad, but maybe we still need to pull this band-aid off and get a better relationship from this. A lot of times when I work with people, the problem with avoiding conflict is you have to constantly avoid conflict. Meanwhile, if you pull the Band-Aid off now, everything will be healed for the next 30 years. Or 50, or 100. Have a fight with a friend. This person did something negative towards me. Instead of letting the resentment build or saying, fuck you, I never want to see you again, I say, that was screwed up. We're going to have this argument about this because maybe we're both stubborn. But we need to get to some level of resolution here because I still want to be friends with this person. I still want to say what you did was incorrect and wrong. We can make amends. We can make we can bury this hatch and get to some resolution. And then we get to be friends for the next 50 years until we're dead. But most people who are afraid of standing up for themselves don't think that long term. They're more thinking about what's going to happen here and now. I'm not thinking how good of a relationship it will be after we get to resolution. They're thinking, oh, this is going to hurt so bad. I might as well just keep my mouth shut and endure this and bury this and, you know, build up the resentment and then blow up this relationship in 10 years. They don't think that consciously, but that's ha that happens. It definitely happens. So, <clears throat> expand your horizon. Say, you know what? It might suck to have this argument or have this assertiveness and say, this is this, these are my boundaries. These are the things I need from you. If you cross this line, here's the consequences. But imagine how good it will feel to have that kind of boundaries, those expectations with someone you can have a healthier relationship with. In fact, let's take some time to meditate it and think about that right now. So close your eyes, get comfortable in your seats or wherever you are. Breathe in and breathe out. Imagine someone you're having conflict with or had conflict with or might in the future. And imagine you care about this person, even if you're currently pissed off at them. And focus on the feeling. Visualize the emotion that would come after the resolution. If I were able to say, this is what I want from you. This is what you need to stop doing when around me. And that person agreed wholeheartedly. Was able to work with you. Imagine the feeling that would come up inside of you. Knowing that this person is safe to be around, healthy for you, that the interaction between you can be vulnerable, can be sharing, can be connected. And just breathe in, breathe out, 
and let that feeling wash over you. And once again, if you find yourself angry or resistant, that's okay. Just change that idea of who that person is to someone else. Move it to a friend, a loved one, maybe even a fictional character. And just imagine what it would feel like where you can say, these are my boundaries. These are my expectations of you. And the other person agrees. And shows you that they're willing to go with you on these boundaries and expectations. And just feel whatever it is you feel. And just breathe in and breathe out at your own pace a little bit more, letting your emotions flow through you. And when you're ready, you can bring yourself back to the room and the screen. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Now, we've been talking a lot about personal relationships. Oh. I try not to let my microphone fall. All right, we've been talking a lot about personal relationships. Let's move this a little bit differently. And let's go into the digital world. Ah, now I'm going to be an old man here and say social media is evil. And it's poison and it's going to kill us all. But the most important thing about it is everyone's trigger fingers turned into Twitter fingers. Everyone likes to act like a troll and like a big man behind a screen. So if you're in a profession where you are big on social media or any media and you get a lot of haters. First things first, don't wrestle with a pig unless you enjoy it. Second, we can do a lot with just establishing boundaries with the social media with the fans with anyone who's online and we can say you know what i might be on the twitter but i don't read the comments i might post to instagram but everything is locked or if not locked i have someone else to look at this thing for me or however you want to go about this but basically it's a self-imposed boundary we're saying, even though I have all these haters, I'm either going to shut them off or try my best to stop caring. Sounds good, especially if you are, these are people you have no actual interaction with. They don't come, they don't support you, they don't... Um, they're, <laughs> they're not coming to the family reunion and they're not coming to the... Uh, any of the events that you're hosting. It's like, great, if that level of distance, we can just not care. However, I've worked with plenty of people who are either work online or they have these big networks of people where they are working together, even though they're neck technically on the other side of the country from each other, or they'll meet up for the, um, you know, the big business events or things like that. We can say, all right, even though we're connected, we're still going to apply the same rules here. Hey, I get it. Trolling and flame wars happen. 
on the Facebook, on the Twitter, on the Instagram, on the on whatever social media of choice you are choosing. But we're still going to say these are my fair fighting rules that I'm not going to cross. Maybe this other person will, but that's pretty not cool. But the idea is if they cross it, that's on them, not on me. I'm still establishing the boundaries and trying my best to be assertive, but not malicious, not trying to hurt the other person, maybe even aggressive and bearing my fangs a little bit, but still not trying to hurt anyone. And that's okay. So that's just a quick aside for the digital communication. We could also talk about that a little bit more, but I think you guys are getting the ideas here. Now, if anyone is listening or any of the presenters want to chime in, is there anything about setting boundaries or expectations or asserting yourself or advocating for yourself that really is hard for you? Where it's like, it's hard for me to advocate for myself because I feel a certain way or we have these beliefs about ourselves that are getting in the way. Anyone like to chime in? Give it a minute and bear with me here. Looks like no. If anyone's typing, go right ahead. Or if you would like to, yeah, if anyone's typing, go right ahead. But if not, I'm just going to throw out some ideas. So sometimes people will say, I have this negative belief about myself about worthiness. I'm not worthy enough to sit at the big kids table or bear my fangs or advocate for myself. And if we are in the low self-esteem category, if you have the imposter syndrome or whatever it is, we can just say, wait a minute, even though I don't feel it or maybe I don't believe it right now, I can still act like it. I can still say, a person who loves themselves would do this, this, this X, Y, and Z. A person who loves himself would not put up with a family member's insults, would not put up with being nagged at the by the boss or by the coworkers, would not be, would would say, hey, listen, this is what I'm trying to get from you, or this is what I want our relationship to be. And even if it feels weird, we can say, all right, it feels weird. It feels wrong. Maybe I'm even resistant to it, but I can do this anyway. If we have trouble doing it anyway, that's where we start to try to increase the self-esteem first. That's where we say, wait a minute, I am worthy. Or this is what I would need to be worthy to sit at the big kids table. And we try to pursue that logistically. Hmm. What else? Other than, you know, excuse me. Other things that may get in the way of asserting yourself. Well, Steve, other people are good, better at arguments than me, or they're better at logic. This is why I really like the nonviolent communication. We're not trying to make this debate. We're not trying to go online and be like, here's a position or opinion I have, and here's the things I need to do to um, um, reinforce it, to make it stronger. It's like, no, 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 this isn't this isn't the monk debates. This is, hey, I'm a human being. This is what I want slash need from you. Whether it's don't do this or share more with me or show more affection. And that's all we're saying. This is what I need. This is my basic human needs. Or these are my, I mean, not so basic human needs, but it's something that just I need and I don't actually have to justify it. I don't have to say, well, this is why I want that. It's like, no, no, no. I like snuggles. I like not being insulted. I like basic respect. It's like simple enough. You don't have to fight about it. Well, if no one has anything to share, I'm just going to ramble for the last five minutes, and it's just going to be nonsense, but bear with me. So, um, a lot of times when I work with people who are ready to find their fangs, they will add a little bit more. They're trying to do this without facing adversity, without the courage aspect. And a lot of times they'll say something like, 
well, I'm so afraid of the unknown. I don't know how this person is going to react to me setting boundaries and expectations, or this is, I don't know how this person's going to react if I'm aggressive. And let's go to the most extreme scenario. If you and another person have irreconcilable differences, and that's a spouse, family member, coworker, whatever. If you and this other person have irreconcilable differences, the most extreme is full divorce. We can both live on this planet. I'm never going to talk to you again. I'm going to lose your number. I'm going to block you on all social media. Bye forever. Maybe even get a restraining order. Bye forever. And it's like, okay, great. We're both on the planet, but we might as well not exist in regards to each other. That's the most extreme. Once you say, man, that is extreme, but there might be some relief from that. There might be some, there's some tiny part of me that finds that attractive. Then we can say, wait a minute. Even if you love your spouse or your mom or whoever the hell, the most extreme case comes with at least one good part. Then we work backwards from there. Even though you're afraid of the unknown, you can handle a full divorce. Even though we're afraid of this person fighting me or trying to get into an argument with me or whatever it is, we can say, even though I'm afraid, I'm going to do it anyway because I can handle whatever the unknown is. Now, of course, in the even more extreme case, if we're in an actual violence situation or domestic abuse situation, we're going to make sure we take extreme precautions or leave and get shelter and get help from that stuff. But outside of actual violence and threats to your mortal life, we're going to say we can handle whatever the unknown is, even if it's scary. And even if it's painful, it's going to be painful. This is how it is. It's just an aspect of human life. But we got to do it anyway. All right. Well, that's what I got for now. Hope this workshop was helpful for you. I hope the meditations were helpful. If you find yourself getting really lost in the how to do things, stop. Focus on the feeling. What feeling do I want to get at the end of this? Take five minutes. Take 30 minutes. Take an hour. Take a day. You're like, let me just focus on the meditation of what is the end point. And then you can say, oh, now I know what I want to do or no, now I have a more clarity in regards to the steps to get to that emotional endpoint. And as always, try some nonviolent communication. I like to thank Pineapple Support, who I love for being able to put this on with me. Thank you very much for everything. I absolutely love working with you guys. And yeah, if anyone has any questions about Pineapple Support, be happy to... Um, share as much as I know. All right. Thank you very much, guys.